hey, chat GPT, write me a raw pound client that connects to this IP address on this port and initializes the connection with a list slash backslash n, that's the line ending. In the background, I want you to fetch images from this URL. And when you receive them, scale the images to 60, 96 pixels width and hold them in memory. And then as a user presses the button from the TCP server, it looks like this. It could be a number from so-and-so. Send this code over with an image and then it shall have this number one substituted by a number from one to 12, and the image must be base 64 encoded. And make sure, by the way, that all the stuff you sent to the TCP, ah, TCP server is ending with a line break. And finally, when the image is taken from the buffer, replenish it with a new one. So we are giving ChatGPT this exercise. And what is behind it, as it is now generating some code for us right here, we, uh, I, I just want to show you a few things. We have uh, Frameshot Pro right here, which is a panel that has color displays right here. And we can connect to it using RAW panel. And that is what this exercise is about. And I want to inspire you to get working with RAW panel yourself. It is so easy to have a, an application like ChatGPT do this. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell it I want Go code. What is it giving me? Ooh, some language I don't get. Uh, I don't like this. Okay, so, so, oh, Python. Some of you might like Python. It could probably do this in Python, but I will have to modify my request to ChatGPT straight away. So let's just uh, modify this. By the way, give me Golang code. Okay, save and submit. So it's going to change this for us. Now, um, raw panel. Yes, uh, with a panel like this one having an IP address, which is typically shown in the display. Let's just type this in. Um, oh, by, by the way, uh, it, it would be you could use a PuTTY on Windows, Netcat NC on Mac, uh, Telnet on Windows, or Linux, whatever. If I do this, you see the panel uh, blanks out because now I'm connected to it. And uh, I also received some binary uh, gibberish here. But if I type in any ASCII command like this, then I will uh, Convert it into ASCII mode. And now as I'm pressing buttons, you see I receive these commands. That is the command I was telling ChatGPT that I want to use as a template for how to receive a button press. So when I press these buttons, I wanted to fetch an image online and put it into the display. Furthermore, the, the code that I told ChatGPT to use here is taken out of the raw panel document. So this is the uh, like documentation for raw panel. It's a PDF you can download from our GitHub repository, which is right here. Support at uh, Skahoy support at GitHub. All right. So um, on this, I basically have a section called processes. And that is a cool, cool thing because processes helps you, for instance, to take like actually a PNG image and send over to the panel and it's going to put it in the display. Uh, you do well in scaling it, so you don't send too much data over the wire, but essentially you just need to take a PNG image and base64 encode it into a JSON structure like that. And then it's going to put it onto the display in various forms. So that is another little piece of this puzzle that I'm trying to put together. So let's copy this code and see if it works out of the box. Over here in my repo for these kind of things, I want to create a new folder and we call this Pixum. And inside the Pixum folder, I will create a new file and that's going to be a main.go file. And then I will enter into this folder, Pixum. And then I need to type in go mod init. We'll just call it Pixum. So it's like setting up a new Go application and go mod tidy. I'll type that in. And then here in this one, I'll paste this code in. So it's there. Uh, go run dot end. That was an undefined resize. I think best is to ask ChatGPT to help us out here. So basically, hey, um, the function uses resize, which doesn't exist. Please fix. Okay, so maybe it is going to help me to do something. It usually apologizes for the oversight. So. You can use this library to resize images in Go. You need to go get, yes, that's fine. Okay, so is it giving me completely new code? It seems like it is. So maybe uh, let's just try to basically copy the whole thing. Sometimes it gives you pieces of code. And now I'll just go run, but it's going to say this. And either you copy paste this one and paste it in here, which uh, you could do, or you could also type this one, go get you, which is sometimes super helpful. So let's try, try to run this. 
So it's running, it's not saying anything. So I am kind of curious what happens when I press this button here. Actually, nothing is happening now. Okay, we need to debug a little bit in that case. Uh, so less impressive than I imagined. But um, maybe first thing that we want to do is to go down here and see it is getting this URL, which URL is it getting image URL? Where, what is image URL? That is the one that I gave it up that all right. So and it is doing that like for the buffer size, it's doing this like five times, adding an image over here. And it is apparently not giving us any indication of error. Okay, but what I do like is to then just type hello here. So we know it's if it if it actually gets past this point. So it seems like it's getting past this point. So we'll just say ready. All right, ready. So it apparently got some images. Uh, what we could maybe do is to um, uh, let me see what is that kind of it's like bytes it's getting back but it's adding this to the buffer okay so it is then connecting to our server it is apparently fine with that the initial command what is the initial command that is the list yes okay so that is also fine and then it is scanning our connection so it's now reading things coming back from the panel and then it is passing the hvc id of command let's just to check what is coming in using this one print out the command and then so uh, as it says, re okay, ready, and it shows us this, interesting. Now I'm just pressing the button and we see these commands entered here. Um, all right, so uh, that's cool and all, but are we getting, creating a JSON package and then it's writing the JSON data out. And maybe this is exactly where it's, Okay, let's just see. No, 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 it is appending the line break. But then again, I don't feel absolutely sure that this is actually, ooh, I actually don't know. I don't know if it, it, it might actually just, yeah, okay. So that's also kind of fine. And does this look, it looks cool. It looks pretty cool. So, um, but I kind of like to see what's going on. So let's just print out this string JSON data, all right? So we see what is being sent. And this ID might be interesting. So how is it passing? It is splitting on that one. Okay, so, um, but we, um, and it's using that, inserting the ID here and the image here okay so that's cool but i want to see what this value is print this out and that would be every time we basically press this down um okay let's run it again it's fetching images and it already sent stuff over okay and why would it do that and it is a little bit big this data is outputting in our face. Okay, so that was an HVC ID zero. So that kind of makes sense that it didn't see that. Okay. Huh. Okay, a lot of content in there. Now, um, all right. So, but it also, it, it's definitely because it's not reading out that one correctly. So I'll just comment out this line. And then that is really the problem up there. What I don't get is, yeah, okay, so now I see this. The thing is, as we are receiving these commands, those commands are not like actually passing for the button press. Okay, so um, I think I need to instruct ChatGPT about this. In this code, you should only accept lines that look like a button down press not anything else you receive button presses look like this so examples are pretty often cool and now we can just give it examples like these just make some button presses around on the panel and paste them in like that okay and then see if it modifies this function for us so it seems that, oh, it has suffix, okay. That seems to make sense. It's probably, it may be passing this correctly.
So let's just quickly try to substitute that in the code and then we open it up again here. And it says we're ready. Still getting a wrong ID. Okay, so that's not a good thing. Um, also, the function pass HVC ID is not returning the right HVC number. Uh, in here are again examples. Oops, sorry. No, we'll just take them from over here. Button HVC numbers are the values like seven, eight, nine, etc. So maybe it will create a different function for me for the patch pass HVC ID. Okay, so let's try this one out and see if that works. Um, pass HVC ID. So of course, at some point, you really need to enable your own brain with this, and probably you would do it at a far earlier stage than what I'm trying to do here, but. I am actually successful now retrieving images from that online resource, although it is not scaling the, uh, sorry, rotating the images for me. So I don't know exactly why that is, but I could investigate that much more. Um, okay, I'll just give it a try, but maybe it's going to take too long. So, okay, this is great, but I get the same image every time. I want a new image from the buffer for for each button press and you should fetch a a new image from online whenever an image has been used once all right so let's see what it does with this information Okay, so it's kind of fixing some things here. So let's see if, if this one works. So it just want me to change the main function, which is like this part of it. So let's see if that is effective. Um, it is still apparently passing this correctly. So that is a good thing. Okay, now let's try. And it has fetched mm, images. Will you fetch images? Well, who knows? I thought it would say ready, but apparently not. And I get images instantly. <laughs> this is actually really, really, really cool. Right? And in the background, it's just getting new images all the time, putting into the displays of the FrameShot Pro. Success.